All right, g'day. So in this video, we're going to talk all things items and also a bit of gameplay and a bit of tech related to items. So just quickly starting with weapons and item level wins here, 489 beats 483 with special effect. As for the two special effect weapons, which is better, Time Strike does better in AOE, Rashon does better in single target. If you have the luxury of swapping between the two, um, although the difference is very minor, Borrow Time will give you slightly higher overalls um, in most, most Mythic Plus dungeons. Depends on the affixes in the dungeon though. Um, but again, this gives you more single target. If you have an augmentation in your group, Borrowed Time will pull ahead a bit just because um, the effect replicates a portion of the damage you deal. And with augmentation, you're dealing more damage. Whereas um, with Rashon, augmentation doesn't really have any effect on it. So one interesting thing about Rashon is it does four times the damage to enemies above 90% health. So in lower, this last boss dies at 90%. Or just below it so you get this enhanced effect for basically the entire fight so as soon as the third boss dies what you can do is when this rp starts it gives you time to teleport to the entrance of the dungeon so here you can change talents change weapon and by the time you get back you only miss a tiny bit of trash um the last boss even if you're skipping to it it has rp anyway so it's free to do this um and no you can't weapon swap to rush on in the dungeon um but yeah even if you have a 489 weapon it's worth downgrading to a 483 Rashon just for this fight, um, especially because you can swap talents as well. I have a 489 Rashon, so I don't even need to weapon swap, but I feel it's worth just swapping talents anyway, because um, as you can see here, you can completely carry boss damage on this fight. And here you can see Rashon effect doing 6%, which is pretty good. So next up we have embellishments. Um, in the last video, I mentioned layer it's good when you get full sockets. Uh, this isn't entirely true. Uh, so for Mythic Plus, you want to run two blue silken all the time, even in high key logs, the uptime is insane. It's actually a noticeable DPS gain. Um, for Raid though, uh, Larry is definitely a good option, especially on these last three fights and also Council of Dreams, just because your uptime is a bit lower on these fights. Um, but it's not going to get you, you know, more than like half a percent DPS, if that. Um, blue silken can still be pretty good on these fights. I'll show some gameplay examples in a little bit. So what about Toxic Boots or Shadow Flame for the last few fights? Um, personally, I don't think it's worth at all. Um, from the logs I've seen, the just damage just isn't there. Um, we have so much mastery this season, which doesn't benefit those effects at all. Also, like Blue Silken just gets better over time. As your item level goes up, your health goes up, you get tertiaries, bosses get nerfed. Um, you know, even if you're on the lower end of the Blue Silken uptime, like 30% on Fire Rack, that's still within like 0.2% DPS of other embellishments. Plus, you know, things like that benefits um, augmentation more. Also, I've seen logs where um, with Toxic Boots on Fire where 40% of the procs are taken by healing. So, you know, I just don't think it's worth swapping. Um, I think you run Lariat and one Blue Silken on those fights. Also with embellishments, you can craft blue silken on the neck and it's one of the best slots to do so. That way you can swap between blue silken and lariat quite easily based on the fight. Also with the food embellishment, um, it's not really worth losing the three item levels over a max mythic track four, unless you're dying quite early into a fight or into a dungeon. Otherwise you're just losing stats. So with Smoldron and blue silken, there's a few things you can do to get better uptime in the intermissions. Um, so the intermission damage is all very front loaded. So um, when I get knocked here, I'm going to regrowth myself instantly because that does a bit of damage. Um, and then the orb spawn and the survival instincts quite aggressively. If you're still progging this fight, might not be worth doing that. Although it's a pretty good spot to defensive anyway, just because they do a lot of damage. And um, if you can get through that and heal above 90%, you basically have it the rest of the phase. Um, you're pretty much chilling. The thing is though, um, leech is really, really good in intermission um, because you're doing double damage. So if you don't have any leech on your gear, it's worth getting a little bit of leech through enchants um, on this fight just because you can completely sustain yourself afterwards. Tindril, kind of the same thing. Um, if you get hit by an orb while flying, you want to land as quickly as possible, regrowth yourself. If you're late, maybe even send the renewal just to get the blue silken buff back up, ready for CDs. Now you want to get your dots on him quickly as possible and then CD as quickly as possible because all you really care about is blue silken for feral frenzy and convoke. The rest doesn't matter. So you can um, thrash or brutal slash in the air um, before the boss lands, just to get one of your BT generators going. Then yeah, dot up the boss. Um, 
Feral Frenzy, Convoke, I Bark Skin before even the first tick, just because it gives DR for your Priest Absorbs, um, it gives you Matted Fur, and yeah, as you can see here, Blue Silken, basically my entire Convoke, and then it falls off after. That's all that really matters. You can SI uh, Survival Instincts if you want um, there as well, but just note that Matter Fur, it doesn't stack when you use both of these together. One final thing with Blue Silken, then I can finally stop talking about it, is um, do I unequip it with Rashon and Signet Brand? The answer is no. Um, do these have an effect on its uptime? Maybe a tiny bit, but not worth swapping embellishment over. Also, I'd like to note that outside of Mythic Plus, um, embellishments really don't matter too much. Um, just know that Blue Silken is theoretically the highest obtainable DPS. And especially for farm and for earlier bosses, um, it will be noticeably better than other embellishments. But for progging the end bosses, you can pretty much run whatever. Lariat is best if you have full sockets, but again, it's all very minor. All right, so next up we have trinkets and you'll see an assortment of on use here. Now these are the only on use trinkets we care about this season as Feral, particularly Ashes and Witherbarks. Um, as for which is better, the short answer is Ashes, better single target, better in raid, with a box, better in mythic plus. So to explain this in more depth, I made these dot points. Um, so Ashes, you can see here, uh, it has no primary stat, all it has is its haste, even the haste you lose half the time. So all its value is in this effect, right? And even the effect decays over time. So it's very bursty, very front loaded burst, which is great for Feral Frenzy and Kavoke, some of our strongest single target abilities. Um, it also means it's better for damage amps in raid because it's so bursty. Better with augmentation evokers if they're buffing you. Um, it's basically Biss on every fight, except for probably Council of Dreams. Um, it's also pretty decent in Mythic Plus with Convoke. I'll talk about that in a little bit, but as for Witherbarks, um, the problem with Ashes is it largely benefits these abilities and they don't scale well with additional targets. Uh, Witherbarks is a lot more well-rounded. It has primary stat on it. Um, it is less bursty, but the mastery on use, uh, mastery scales really well in AoE. Um, and you can also play this with any build. It's not just a Convoke Trinket like Ashes. So as for Ashes and Mythic Plus, I have a sim here in pretty much BIS gear with Convoke RF. Um, and Ashes is only about 0.5% behind, which is pretty close. And if you factor in Ashes being more bursty and also easier to play, I think you can make a pretty good argument for running Ashes with a Convoke RF build. So how to play with the box correctly. You want to grab two orbs and then kite the third one as long as possible. Now they spawn in a fixed position. So there'll be one at two o'clock, one at 10 o'clock and one at six o'clock. So what I like to do is start on one side of the boss. That means you have more room to kite. Um, if you're in the middle, it gets a bit awkward. Um, also it is a little bit awkward practicing on dummies just because the hitbox isn't as big as a boss, but because you know exactly where they'll spawn, you can get the first two, even if your raid is covered in people or effects, um, you should always know where to go. So I'm gonna open, I'm gonna use the trinket straight away, and then I'm gonna grab the right, go to my left, pop my CDs, and then, you know, just cut the third one. Um, and yeah, it's a bit awkward on this dummy, but, and then refresh the last one as late as possible. So that's pretty much it. Um, a lot of people complain about not seeing orbs and stuff, just remember, you know exactly where the first two spawn. Um, so you can do the same thing every time and get your orbs. So next up we have Mirror, um, which is actually a really good trinket with Incarn and B's Mythic Plus and Council of Dreams raid builds. It's also quite good with the left-right single target build, assuming that your kill time aligns favorably with the trinket CD. Now, how you want to use Mirror is use it with every second Berserk. So one, three, five, seven, etc. Um, and make sure you use your Feral Frenzy at some point early in the mirror um, window so that mirror covers the entire 10 seconds or roughly 10 seconds of smoldering frenzy um, also incarn lasts 30 seconds mirror 20 seconds so you can send your incarn up to 10 seconds early then mirror for the last 20 seconds and feral frenzy in there as well um, so you make little choices about how to align the three it's not like convoke and convoke trinkets where everything aligns perfectly so it's actually quite fun um, aligning them. Just to explain what I mean a bit better, um, Feral Frenzy just came up, Incarn's not quite up, um, Mirror is already up waiting. So um, here you just hold your Feral Frenzy, get your Incarn up and then use the three together. Obviously in Mythic Plus, uh, they won't align quite as nicely as this. Um, so you have to make little decisions on how to align the three together. 
So as for mirror sims, um, here's an Incarn, pretty standard Incarn build. It actually sims the highest on use, higher than Wither Box, although they're pretty much even. And same thing with bees, also sims the highest on use. So as for Rage Heart, it's the tank trick off Firak. It's really good in Mythic Plus. It's only a small DPS loss and you get access to an absorb every minute and a half, which is really nice as Feral. Um, going to LFG, there's a million groups right now because of the legendary um, find one with a lot of people, go tank loot spec, try win the roll. Even if you get a normal mode one, that's fine. Item level doesn't really matter too much with this trinket. Now, using this trinket with Incarn, you can use it as your only on use if you want. Um, but as for Convoke, you want uh, either Ashes or Wither Box with Convoke. So uh, it does get a little bit awkward using it with Convoke. It is a bigger uh, DPS loss with Convoke just because you know one trinket puts the other on CD um, and that can sometimes delay your convoke timings and so on or you can't use this quite as frequently um, but again I think it's still absolutely worth it with convoke and especially with Incarn. Here's an example of how Rage Heart can clash with other trinkets so it's about to come off CD um, Ashes isn't far off either but convoke is still 17 away so I decided to just send the Rage Heart um, and then you know the issue with this is when convoke comes up uh, I'm not quite paying attention and I you know, go to use my burst and my ashes isn't quite ready so just be careful of that. As for passive trinkets there's five we care about as feral, signet brand, sandglass, pips, crab and ember. Um, as for signet brand it's not quite as good for us as it is other specs firstly because we run a lot of mastery we also don't really um, have a lot of haste so it takes longer for us to ramp it up. For feral the fight needs to be about four and a half minutes in length for Signet Brand to be worth. Um, that obviously is assuming equal item level. For me, I have a 483 Sandglass, so because of the item level gain, it's worth about four minute fights. Um, but again, if you have a lower item level Signet Brand, you might need like a six or a seven minute fight. So it is quite good on all the end bosses, um, Naimu, Laradar, um, but not really these, especially not Volcaros. Um, it is also very single target heavy. Uh, it's affected by downtime. Also, no, not worth it in Mythic Plus. You lose your stacks too easily. If you die, if there's downtime between packs, flight paths, so on, there's just better trinkets for us there. Also, simming this trinket, make sure you adjust your fight timer just because this value is so dependent on the fight time. Now, as for the last four passive trinkets, you can't really go wrong with any of them. They're all similar in performance. Just take the highest item level you can get. But if you want an all round best, Pips and Ember both perform really well in all scenarios. Um, that being said, Sandglass is slightly ahead in single target. It's just worse in AoE. Also has a really high proc rate that you kind of want uptime to saturate. Also with Crab, slightly worse single target, um, similar in AoE to these. It has RNG swings just because um, it has the strongest proc of all, all of them and the lowest proc rate. This can be favorable at times. It can be unfavorable at times. It's not really worth worrying about. Um, lastly, the silence on Ember, I've checked logs. I can't tell if it's useful or not. Um, I know a lot of casts have CDs anyway, but if anyone knows if this is good in any particular dungeons, let me know. Also, you can run these trinkets as double stat sticks in Mythic Plus um, with certain builds like Incarn or Bees. Um, however, I don't really recommend it just because burst is so valuable and you're missing out on that. The last thing I wanted to cover was tertiaries because they're pretty OP this tier. For whatever reason, they scale with item level. For example, my helmet gives me 9% speed. I had a speed helmet last tier, it gave me 7%, but it's not like you need extra speed or extra avoidance or whatever based on the tier. Um, so for season three and especially going to season four, tertiaries really, really strong. If you get them in your vault, try and prioritize them. Um, even if it has bad stats, you can always catalyst them. You can make up stats in other ways through crafting through rings, through sockets. So yeah, tertiary is really good. So that's the video. Let me know if there's anything I didn't cover that you want answered, specifically related to items and gearing. Um, also, thanks for all the comments in previous videos. Helps give me a lot of direction. Um, definitely more videos soon. So hopefully this was helpful. And yeah, see you next time.